Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pots, pro gun, and pro coffee. And pro Red Bull. And pro Red Bull. And uh, you can find our contents on iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, go subscribe to us on YouTube. I am Ron Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And uh, we're going to open up today with uh, a little update on some activism that's been going down in the Shire as of uh, late. So there's a 420 rally that happened uh, yesterday that Shire Dude here had. He had a lot to do with uh, getting the word out about it. Right, yeah. Um, I actually I helped design the 420 flyer, um, which, by the way, if you're watching the cam, uh, let's see, the cam is on ShireDude.com. So you go to ShireDude.com, click on... Rebel Love Show on the left-hand side of the page, and uh, there's our beautiful faces. Uh, Anyway, and so I'm going to show the cam, which is why I wanted you to go there. Um, The flyer, which actually looks pretty fancy, and I was very clever in not putting a year on it so we can use them next year. (laughs) All the ones we didn't use. Very smart. Um, And we passed them out on a college campus. Yeah, I I missed that because of my day job. How did that go? It went really, really well. Um, Most people, like, they just generally hate activists passing stuff out. Because it's usually like stuff you don't want to take, like, oh, try my religion, or, oh... Save you know, the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, or this is an aborted <laughs> fetus you want to have to look at before lunch. And uh, nobody likes, you know, nobody likes to take stuff like that. But uh, the second they see the pot leaves on the flyer, they're like, ooh! Yeah. And, uh, well, who doesn't like the smoke? That's the thing. Right. Everyone right. loves the smoke. There was one kid who was, like, probably, like, a D.A.R.E. graduate who, like, tore it up dramatically and threw it in the trash can. You think he was doing it just for to be dramatic, or do you think he actually really meant it? Oh, yeah, of course he meant it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's always going to be that one person who's just like totally opposed to whatever you're promoting. And what I find surprising is the the fact that like, how is it that marijuana is not even legal now in this state or just in most of the country? You know, yeah, there's medical marijuana from uh, in a few places, and then obviously Colorado and California, but like in uh, Washington, but. I don't know how the fact that even at this point, it feels like, how is this still an issue? It's baffling. You know, it is. I understand this being an issue 10 years ago. It's, <laughs> I don't understand how it's an issue now. Well, the government's know? always about 10 years behind the populace, right? Yeah. As far yeah. as like what's, you know, what's right or morality, I should say. You know, people like to think that the laws are, are equivalent to their morals, right? That's yeah. at least that's the lie they tell themselves. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, for some reason, people think it's okay to kidnap people over a plant. But uh, there's a 420 rally yesterday in Concord. Uh, unfortunately, it was a really cold, rainy day. It was so gross. It was like the first most terrible day of the season. Like, we've just come out of winter, and we haven't really had any bad days. It's been beautiful up here. It's been fantastic. For like the last week, especially for the pub crawl that uh, Shardud uh, created the, uh, that we went uh, did the other week. Like it was a beautiful day for that, and that re- we there's a 420 rally in Manchester for that, and uh, that day was beautiful to walk around, but yesterday was horrible. Yeah, it was like in the thir- uh, high 30s. It was like barely above freezing and <laughs> raining like steadily. Um, it felt like I was in. I, I imagine what it'd be like in Seattle in the winter, and that's what I kind of felt like in uh, in uh, Concord yesterday. And there was definitely. Uh, Fair weather activists in the Shire, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you'd think after deciding to sign the statement of intent, you know, moving probably halfway across the continent <laughs> to be here, <laughs> you'd show up, rain or shine, for a 420 rally on the state house <laughs> with the smoke up with another uh, state rep, you know, uh, to actually do, any, you know, I, I understand that some people don't want to do civil disobedience all the time or whatnot, but I mean, come on, marijuana, like that's. It's a one year, once a year rally at the state house, and uh, I was I was surprised by the numbers that showed up in rain or shine because I thought it'd be half the, what the crowd that was there uh, with the weather that was. Yeah, well, we had a hundred and fifty RSVPs, yes, yeah, and we had about forty people show up. Yeah, I know. Um, I I still think that's disgraceful. I mean, this is the Shire. I I'm not impressed. Um, this was my first four twenty rally too. And I, I was just well. The one first one at the state house. You've done, you've gone to multiple ones already. Well, yeah, like the 420 yeah. rally. Yeah. Last 420, I was uh, sitting in my own backyard in California, smoking pot like crazy, with just you know some like work friends, and that was that was my rally. It's just mm-hmm. you know hiding in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was disappointed too. Uh, 
sometimes uh, you know weather does affect mm -hmm. activism. Interesting though, there were I think one this one state trooper was idling outside for like a minute, and then other than that, I didn't even see any cops. No, there weren't. There wasn't really a police presence. At no all. presence and zero arrests. Obviously, I would say that the crowd was probably large enough to warrant no police presence. But it wasn't large enough to me where I was super impressed. Yeah. But, we still know. got coverage in the Concord Monitor, yeah, though. Yeah, No, there was uh, some press coverage with it. I know NH1 News was there as well covering the events. Right. I heard ShireDude.com actually live streamed. Yeah. There, from yeah. The event. That's, for, for all those uh, fair weather activists out there, you're, you're in the thick of it live streaming the whole time. I always wonder if maybe my live streaming actually is a detriment to uh, turnout. Because people are like, oh, I guess watch from home. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a camera kind of does a better job than uh, other people just standing there, I guess. I don't yeah. know. But that's the whole point is to be out there as well. Right. Um, but, uh, well, I would say that, that doing live streaming like that is a great tool to show people that stuff is going on here. But it sucks when you're doing that. And some a lot of people don't show yeah. to what you're trying to show off that's being done. Right, because then it doesn't look impressive to the other people watching the live stream. Yes. Um, one of the things that really inspired me, actually, when I uh, first got into live streaming and watching live streams was um, uh, Mike Salvi. You ever watch Mike Salvi's oh, World? I love Mike Salvi's World. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he used to live stream different uh, protests and stuff like that. And he did specifically the, f the big 420 rallies in Philly. Yeah. Um, the one where uh, Kokesh got arrested. He did that one. And um, that was just really, really inspiring to watch because, I mean, this guy, he's actually the one who uh, did the technique where he rubber banded his uh, phone that was had Ben Buser on it. He rubber banded his phone to his tripod. Um, and actually, that's actually where I got that from. No, that's a good idea. Yeah. See, what you need to do is get a, uh, a really nice camera that mounts to a tripod that has Ben Buser built into it. Yeah. And then you can just do it from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, well, that's the plan is to get something higher end than this. I mean, this I'm just wearing down until yeah. it dies. Well, if you want to help Shire Dude uh, live stream better, send him some Bitcoin so he can uh, get some nice equipment. And by the way, folks, uh, if you are in the LRN chat and want to ask us some questions, feel free because we do monitor the chat room. Well, Shire Dude more monitors it than I do. Uh, I'm glued to the chat room. Yeah, yeah. He, he's always in the chat room uh, looking for questions to ask uh, you know, that you guys want to hear about. Yeah, we use the chat room through uh, LRN.FM. Actually... I'm having some trouble with the HTML on that and putting that onto my own website, shiredude.com. Like, for some reason, it worked on the RLS website, but since we switched to Shiredude, I've been having trouble plugging it in. So if anyone in the chat wants to help me with that and figure out how to get that on my website, I'm that sure. way you guys just have, have to have one page open. I mean, that'd be huge. I'm sure someone can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, some, some techie. We're still a learning out. hospital, folks. Yeah. We have tech issues that arise from time to time. Yeah, We're like, working on it, though. I learned HTML using, like, MySpace and stuff, <laughs> and it's been a while since I've really done anything. I remember I used to uh, teach myself <laughs> how to do, like, CSS code and HTML for MySpace to yeah. have, like, a really nice theme. <laughs> you know? music auto-playing and a yeah. background. So your top eight would, like, be in the, in the, the right spot. Custom top eight. Custom <laughs> top eight. I think I had a top 12 with, like, I a added, custom new URL. Or I was one of those ridiculous CSS. person. Yeah, I, I had like a top 32 or something. Yeah. <laughs> MySpace, man. Remember the days where you actually had to go to a computer, sit down, and type up a status update? Wow. It's yeah. Like, it seems archaic now. Right. It and seems you... like going, it's, like, it's like me imagining going to a library to like do some research. Mm hmm. Like that's what it feels like. To, like thinking about back then, what MySpace was to what today and, is. And now it's like you're sitting in the restaurant doing the restaurant view at the restaurant. It's so weird. Yeah, it's like everything is instantaneous now. It's all in real time. It is in real time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned the the pub crawl. Yeah, yeah, the pub crawl. Yeah. Um, I did want to mention before we go too far away from this is uh, oh well, there's gonna be another pub crawl next month celebrating my first year of the Shire. I'm finally going to turn one in the Shire years. I think six Shire years. <laughs> We're going to celebrate uh, Shire Year's sixth year anniversary in the Shire next <laughs> month, kids. some real estate all right so should i play some of these karaoke or hold on to it <laughs> the question from the chat room is 
do oh can you turn this down a little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's do the hosts feel safe with the spiraling vortex from hell right behind them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to change that up. We need to put uh <laughs> well we'll talk about it in, in, I would love to do like a fun new background for we, us. I don't know, something really shire duty that's like hmm. Right now this is a DMT trip simulation. Yeah, we just keep using the same one over and over. I mean, we need to get new equipment. That's the thing. Which we'll get. End the month, folks. I'm going to talk about it in, in uh, one of the next coming segments. But uh, we're going to be uh, upgrading the show uh, with some new computing processing power here. Because we're running this from one laptop, and that's it. And it's uh, doing the show with a green screen just is taxing out uh, this PC. So, which is crazy to do just on one. So, we're going to be upgrading to a new PC soon. Uh, next paycheck. Yeah. Coming down the days. It's going to look so much nicer once we get the next one. Yeah. 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 So, if you want to help us out, send us some Bitcoin. Um, but, uh, yeah, next paycheck, new equipment, new. Uh, Oh, whenever I hear that, I always think it's the break <laughs> coming up. We really need a show clock. Like that's we need to invest in a show clock. Mm -hmm. He's all in the chat. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I Ian's in the chat room helping me out uh, with um, how to get the chat room on the Shire Dude website. Oh, that's cool. I'm taking screenshots of everything you're saying here, so I can check it out later. Yeah, see the last time. <laughs> I always think it's all those LRN commercials tri know, tripping us out. You think there's a break? Last time I just stole Corey Moore's uh, chat room. Uh, oh, the code? Yeah, just the code right off yeah. of his website, and then it worked for me. Mm. So, yeah, we'll figure. It so out. I'll tr I'll try this solution, Ian. But uh, if it doesn't work, I'm probably just gonna message Corey Moore and be like, "What the heck did you do?" <laughs> <laughs> So we'll talk about the pub growl when we come back because it kind of um, like went right into it. I mentioned we're doing another one. Um, I should mention what's at the end of that pub crawl, right? The very end, what I wanted to do. Are you going to have it ready by then? Yeah, it'll definitely be ready. Um, you want to plug your phone? Oh, yes. The charger right there. Mm -hmm. I was going to say use the, the white one. Where is it? Use oh. that white one. Don't use the black one. Use the white one. Oh, what? Use the white one. Okay. Did that go out on the? Uh, it's you're on it. See, this is something we can talk about next segment. Ellaren.fm in Africa. I would. I would love to be on in Africa. We, we were on in Africa for a little while. The Cameroons need to listen to the Rebel Love Show. All right. back to the rebel love show and uh you're listening to us live on lrn.fm and if you love this message that you're hearing on lrn think about uh donating some money to the cause because uh lrn is no longer being broadcast via satellite in africa so i don't know about shire dude but i really want the cameroons and anyone living in sierra leone or nigeria or, or hell even the congo I want them to be able to listen to the Rebel Love Show. Absolutely. And uh, there's an Indiegogo. Is it Indiegogo? Yeah, it's Indiegogo. Is it Indiegogo? Um, I should know this. On the front page it's of LRN. It's on the front page of LRN.fm. Go donate somebody uh, to get us uh, on the air over uh, satellites in Africa. We actually were at the beginning of the year. So a couple episodes got through to Africa. and then Cool. Yeah. 
which is kind of cool being uh, broadcast on satellite. Because the thing yeah. is, in um, a lot of people, a lot of Americans don't really, really realize is the way that telecommunications work in the states is completely different than what it is like in Africa or Asia, where uh, basically over the air satellite is the de facto way of broadcasting. Uh, um, TV and almost every household has like you know one one just one TV, but they got a satellite dish to get like uh, a lot of information coming down. And just like how there's you know like Direct TV or Comcast, there's like audio channels. There's a same something similar for that, and LRN is one of those feeds. So there, it it was being broadcast over there. Um, and a lot of those places are still you know they're developing countries, so they don't may, they may not have like that strong internet base, but they can still get satellite. So a lot of times that information is just as powerful as the internet itself. That's so, insane, uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole different way of like how that uh, TV works over there compared to over here. Uh, it's really fascinating. I would just love to be the afterthought in some like African dude's head who's like, I wonder what happened to the Rebel Love show. Just like in the back of his mind, you know? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's another kind of crazy thing. It's like, I wonder how many foreign listeners we have. Like people that are listening uh, in like Europe or elsewhere, I, I have no idea. No one's ever, to my knowledge, there might be a couple. But. I was briefly checking out like shyadude.com site hits before this uh -huh. show started, and uh, mostly United States. Like some people in like Fresno, like places where I, I don't really know anyone. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, one thing I was, uh, I remember um, like last time I looked at the analytics of my YouTube channel, uh, Volunteers Trouble, which I rarely ever publishing videos on that anymore, unless there's like some crazy cop footage I'll post it on there. Um, but uh, I've last time I looked at the analytics, I apparently have a uh, like a, a, something about like twenty percent of the views are from uh, Brazil. That's weird. Yeah, it's like I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, how are you watching this? You know, it, it didn't make any sense. And then the others were like, besides the U.S., it was like Canada, Britain, and uh, and Australia, which made sense. But uh, Brazil. Brazil threw did, me for a loop. And did you immediately like try to like wonder like what can I do to pander to these Brazilians? You like, know what? I probably should because like even on Twitter I had like you know multiple uh, like liberty oriented like Twitter accounts following me from <laughs> Brazil, which again I don't. Uh, it, it's just fascinating that I, I I'd see that correlation somehow. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Anyways, uh, last week uh, we did a pub crawl. Well, Shire did do more. Did it? I kind of just followed suit, but. Uh, um, it's amazing how it started. I don't know if we told week? that yeah, story of how week. it started. No, you did not tell the story about the pub. Which call. was um, <laughs> this guy on Facebook, Anton, posted a status saying, I wish we had a Manchester pub crawl with like activists and like cool activist stuff we could do. And so I just went and I made, I made an event page in like one night. And yeah. we got this amazing turnout, about 40 people at the peak. At, the, at its peak, yeah. Um, we did a 420 rally. It led it led into a Bitcoin accepting bar, which led to a Bitcoin accept or um, the the second place was a uh, the place with the world's longest running Bitcoin meetup, which is Strange Brew. Which is Strange Brew. Well, right now it's Strange Brew. Yeah, until the until the uh, revolution happens, <laughs> so, uh, our act of sedition against the. Uh, Against the Bitcoin meetup. Uh, Do we want to talk about that? That's kind of really it's interesting. Well. It, it is, is interesting. Super inside baseball. I mean, I just want to switch locations. I know. Basically, there's been uh, the Bitcoin meetup in Manch uh, has moved twice since I've been here. And uh, there's it's always been between Murphy's and Strange Brew. And we're getting at the point where we don't like either locations that much. We really want to move it. And we're, we're thinking about starting a. Uh, a revolution or sedition act within the bitcoin meetup and start another one and see if other people and just start traveling uh, to different bars yeah, to find our new home yeah to find the new home for the meetup <laughs> uh because the service has of late has not been great and it, they need to learn you know what they're missing so to speak right and they don't accept bitcoins yeah what and they've been there for over a year but the thing is it's 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 half price. It's happy hour price oh it's cheap it's oh cheap. yeah and you know the waiter's nice matt's a good guy but it, yeah, a lot of the people going there aren't hurting for money anyway. It's not like a bunch of starving activists are eating and drinking there. True. They need to, you know, pull on their big boy, big boy, big boy pants and uh, check out some of the other bars. We could, like, we could own one of the smaller bars, you know. We could, as uh, one of the activists, Calvin, said, we could make them our bitch. Well, during that pub crawl, I definitely believe that because, like, especially when we went to uh, Doogie's and Karma, like, we own both those bars. You know the guy who it. came into Karma? Uh, the guy who was sitting there who was also working there? Yeah, they, I know. He, they called him in specifically for us. No shit. Do you know that? They called no. him in to work. Specifically for us. Like, that's what I want. I want bars to totally, like, cater to us. Yeah. And that no, was we, a very good we example We own of it. that in Karma. We literally had, like, 
the two or three booths, multiple tables. Like it was, yeah. it was insane. The how place much. was ours. Yeah, yeah. Karma, by the way, if you ever in Manch, Karma, awesome hookah bar. Yeah, we'll go with you. Yeah, we'll go with <laughs> you. Any excuse to go to Karma, I, I love mm -hmm. that joint. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was fascinating for like just a bunch of porcupines to take over other bars. Right. Like, uh, and then of Manchester. course, we ended up at the Secret Activist Club, the Quill, oh, which is really super secret. Club. Not really super <laughs> secret anymore. <laughs> Free State Project headquarters, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I mentioned before the break uh, last time that we're going to do another one next month to celebrate my one year in the Shire or however many Shire years that is. Uh, at the end of it, I'm going to finally release the season finale of Shire Dude season one. It's about time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you, it's, you used to bust those out once a week. I did them once a week. And then you did them like once a month. Yeah. Now it's like once a Shire year if you're lucky. You see, the longer I wait though, the, the more awesome footage I get because I, you know, I go through hours and hours of footage and I pick out those little moments that are like Shire Dude moments. Yeah. No, I hear you. I don't know if you've ever seen my show, uh, ShireDude.com. It's like the first playlist on the page. It's a trip. They're a few minutes long. Yeah, they're only like watching intoxicated. Five minutes long. Yeah. You want know if you want to get an idea of what the culture is like <laughs> in Manchester, just watch that. Get high and watch that watch show. Watch that. <laughs> By episode six, you're gonna be like either you're gonna be convinced to move or you're just gonna delete your Facebook account, one or the other. It's gonna be one of those two. Um but uh, yeah, uh pub crawl. Now one thing I love about that pub crawl is I had more fun on that than during the uh the pub crawl in the free coast during a free coast festival, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and uh, don't get and me wrong. That, didn't they might, charge? <laughs> they did charge for that, uh, which I, I didn't. Uh, of course, they had more stuff going on. We gotta, we gotta they be did fair. have they they had a cruise they had trivia. You know, I mean, I suppose we could probably like you well, know, you still rent had to a boat on the Merrimack. You still had to weird. pay for the crawl, though. You if even if you just went to the crawl, I didn't pay for the crawl. Oh, that's right. That's probably why they don't like you. You were freeloading. I bought drinks. The freeload project, ladies Look, and gentlemen. I had to work. I it's a pub crawl with a bunch of liberty activists, which I wanted to go to. I didn't go on their cruise. I didn't go to the, any of their talks or the hotel or anything like that. I just bar hopped with a couple other people who happened to be going along that uh <laughs> Free Coast Festival. Yeah. The Free Coasters hate you now. They hate I me guess too. I'm never going to be invited to the Praxium. Yeah, I'm already banned from the Praxium. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, more uh, crawls and festivals coming up. Yeah. Do you, do you hear the uh, break coming up? Yeah. Okay. I can barely get that one. Okay, maybe it's your. Uh, this, this will raise you up. Yeah. Is that raising you? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Is that good cool. enough? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we turn down the commercials though during the break? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. As entertaining as it is, you know. Well, no, 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 no. I was just making sure you can hear us yeah, yeah. hear the break coming up. Well, I'm gonna start smoking. And your gap intact. I would love to make a Shire Dude movie. Wait, I'm confused. Did Newbie 66 change his name to 636? There's 636 now in the chat room. Oh, you know what we should talk about what? next? This. The pot? Yeah. Oh, the THC cleanse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, man, spoilers. Oh. Sorry, live listeners. Pretend I didn't say that. Yeah, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> Especially for the people listening to just LRN next to you. I was a dick. What? Hey, what? Dude, you, someone called you a dick in the chat room. Why? What did I do? You know, there are really two demographics that I'm going for right now with Shire Dude. Is I want more haters, and I also want more cult followers. Uh, Ian, I was at the 420 rally last year. And I was not at the 420 rally last year because I had not yet moved. I moved yeah. the month after. Yeah, he was a uh, he was being a fair weather activist living in uh, California, <laughs> right? Instead of moving to the Shire, I couldn't get my my butt over, and I was too busy in the sunshine. Wow, really? He says this year seemed bigger despite the rain. I disagree. Yeah. Really? 
I thought I thought this well, year last year's to be it. fair was on Easter, and I know a lot of activists oh, actually do have families. That we, they see. we appreciate, yeah. We I, well, Shire, you pimped them out more than I did, but yeah, thanks, Ian. You know, I I was really uh, I was really pushing that promotion, and I think next year, especially since we already have the flyer designed, and I've got a hookup for a printer, I think. Uh, It'll be bigger next year, uh, the promotion at least. In fact, I was talking to Rich um, about who's running it next year. I want to be more involved next year, but that's a conversation I have to have with Rich. I always think that's it. Why did you move to the Shire? And then you can hear um, Blonde Dude. Blonde Dude is in this commercial. Did you know that? I mean, Cecilin? Blonde dude. Blonde, that's blonde dude now? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be around people like me who got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start mimicking her. Uh, like, with that commercial. Remember when this commercial didn't have Daryl in it? <laughs> I do. You know, astute listeners of the Rebel Love Show will... Uh, will realize that me and Blonde Dude are in now in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. I, I don't know if I don't know if anyone's really picked up on that yet. It wasn't. I'm working on it. Yeah, rebelloveshow.com is on Did hiatus. The state take it over? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's on hiatus. It's coming back. Don't worry. Yeah. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, I had some uh, we had some life experiences during a uh, during a karaoke event that again Shire dude put on. You know, I've been like the little like you, socialite you've been, lately. Yeah, you've been the uh, event coordinator of uh, of Manchester of Manch for uh, for a lot of things lately. No, granted, there are plenty of things that I don't plan, like the Bitcoin meetup and other activist meetups, the Austrian Economics Group. There's so many things going on here. Yeah, new movers party. I'm not. I'm. I don't even touch that. But yes, I. Uh, I have been doing my own share of event planning, and one of the events I really wanted to do was karaoke, which was a blast. I, you know, I was a karaoke god back in California, and I couldn't find any good karaoke places in Manchester. Um, but Rob did tip me off to a Chinese restaurant, Yi Dynasty. Yi Dynasty. That it's got a restaurant portion, and then the other side of the restaurant is a full bar and the karaoke every night. When you walk in there, it's like walking into, uh, it's, it's like you literally, you walked into the 80s. Everything looks like 80s. There's even like a big projection set, TV. Um, like the, the people that are there look like they're from, it, just everything. It's just very, very, and it's very, very local, like super local joint. Uh, no, that was fun karaoke. We had like, what, 15, 20 people there? I believe about 15 um, and you know, Bruno, the new mover did it with me from Brazil. Yeah. So and he, he hit the high notes. He's amazing. If you go to YouTube, uh, dot com slash V rebel raw, I have uh, a couple of videos of some of that, uh, of the karaoke that happened, including Shire dudes and Bruno's, uh, duet, which, uh, <laughs> they, they, they knocked it out of the park. I don't yeah. think I was talking to like the guy that runs that karaoke, uh, the karaoke part of that bar. And he's like, I'm, I've, I'm hearing requests that I've never even heard of before in like 10 years. <laughs> he actually asked us where we were from at one point and yeah. everyone kind of looked at each other like, <laughs> should we say we're free staters? I don't, I don't know, man. Like we didn't want to like spoil the, the mood or the vibe or anything. And then, uh, one of us yelled, we're from Vermont. Brattleboro. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that doesn't really fly because I've already been in there a couple of times. The waitress already recognized me. What am I coming from uh, Vermont every like every day, yeah. every every week to, yeah. to go uh, go to this place? I'm definitely going to become a regular there. And actually, I realized something, Rob. What's that? Something that needs to happen 
Oh yes, you were you were telling me about this. Uh, I I feel as if this is the proper venue to uh, release this uh, this revelation of yours this upon is, the uh, masses. This is something that hasn't been spoken of publicly yet, and you are hearing for the first time. Keen and Manchester have had a rivalry for a long time, back all the way back to the gay dance off. Which was like what? Which was so long 15, ago. 15, 20 Shire years ago? Yeah. Neither, both of us were, didn't even live here when that happened. Right. Like, I barely remember like seeing like a YouTube ad for it one time. Hell, that was pre and post Billy Rock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anyway, I realized that we need to have a karaoke off between Keen and Manchester Keen, anyone in Keen, if you're watching this, consider this me slapping you with a glove. The throwdown has happened. It's been thrown down. Yeah. I'm making an event page for this. Assemble your team, or your squad, or whatever you want to call them, and meet us at Ye Dynasty. We're going we're gonna to blow you guys out of the water, though, because we have some amazing singers here in Manchester. Yes, and if you want to see some of those amazing singers, again, go to that uh, V Rebel Raw on YouTube. Watch... Uh, Shire do in action and know what you got yourself into. Um, it it's, could be it could be the it could be the activist events of <laughs> of the Shire year. Yeah, it's going yeah. down, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get someone in there and record all the performances and put them online. We can put them online and have a uh, I have a poll of who was uh, who were better, uh, Manchester Keen activists. We could have a poll. I'm thinking the fairest way to do it is to appoint some uh, judges. Before well, the how about event, this? how about just have likes on the on the YouTube, whichever YouTube video got the most likes, gets the most likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that could happen, but then you could argue that oh, Manchester has so many more activists than Keen. Yeah, but no one, no one would ar no one would argue that because that all I would have to say is there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Oh, oh, that's but, uh, right. that's why they wouldn't argue that. So that's not even bring that up. The Keeniacs wouldn't even mention the fact that Manchester has way more activists than they do. Oh, no. no okay. They... Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Keen, prove, prove why people should move to Keen based off your karaoke skills alone. And we'll prove why people need to move the manage based of our karaoke uh, skills alone. And then the world, the entire, every single signer of the FSP can decide which city to move to based off of who is better at karaoke. I think it's a fair... I think that's the reason that people move to places is yes. how good is the karaoke Exactly. Right. You know, you don't want to move to a city that has a horrible karaoke scene. You want to move to a city that has a, you know, a very hot karaoke scene. Something beautiful Brazilian into. mustached singers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's more beautiful than that? I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. Yep. So... <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that happens. <laughs> I, I can't wait. It's definitely going to happen. Um, so you know, so far my events have been doing well in Manchester. So yeah. I'm going to keep making them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that has to be near. Has to be before Porkfest. Definitely before Porkfest. I'd say. I'd say within next month. Hell, uh, you know what? They, it, even if it was, if it was super successful. Yeah. It could be a Porkfest event as a sequel. Right. Like, Rematch. Yeah. On the main stage. Oh. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like know. A, um, a, the karaoke off. Blonde dude is the uh, Porkfest organizer. She could probably help me get in touch with uh, the right person for that. Oh, yeah. That'd be. I would love to have something like that. Mm -hmm. A Manch Keen karaoke. Like it would be round one in uh, Manch. Right. Then round two Porkfest. See, now you got to make that. I'll just brainstorm. That totally me. raises the stakes. It does too. raise the stakes. Yeah. Because you're singing in front of all sorts of Liberty lovers, and Jeffrey Tucker's going to be the uh, in the audience. And Jeffrey Tucker could be a judge. Oh, he could definitely be a judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would other be good judges for that though? If you had to pick people that would be a pork fest, they'd have to be all they like could, celebritarians. and they can't be they can't be from Manch or Keen. They have to right. be outside of that. Right. Yeah, Davi Barker. Davi maybe. Barker. Davi Barker. Totally impartial. I would trust. I would trust anything he'd say. He could just say something like off the top of his head, and I would trust it. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. So you need one third more. Third more to be. Uh, Oh, I don't even know, but those two would be great. Maybe the Creamy D. The Creamy D. Yeah, Creamy D, Davi Barker, <laughs> and Jeffrey Tucker judging a karaoke competition. Uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, so uh, we got a checkpoint coming up. Yeah, speaking of Manchester events. I know, it's right? It's checkpoint season. Uh, I can't wait for checkpoint season. It's uh, always fun to go out the, and cop like a DUI checkpoint. I never thought I'd love to see all those blue uniforms and the blue and red lights and the cones. It, it's, it's like it's, Christmas. It is. It's like activist Christmas going out there and recording them and 
Uh, and then on top of that, locals love the fact that we're out there uh, coming over and uh, you know, shaking our hand, hugging us, for, like the, the helping them not going through a checkpoint. Handing activists money out their car windows, which has happened on multiple occasions. Oh, yeah. 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 And you're going to be live streaming it, right? Thank you for your service. Yeah. Oh, and I will be live streaming from shiredude.com. You just go to the live stream section of the site and um, I'll be live streaming the, like, the entire time starting at 10, 15 p.m. Some of my favorite uh, times during uh, the DUI checkpoints is just going along Elm and not even going up to the police or anything like that. Just hitting the bars yeah, and handing out cop lock material and saying, hey, uh, you know, avoid Bridge Street. There's a there's a police checkpoint. Yeah. Just talking to the locals. Yeah. And this is happening on Friday now. Um, I've actually got a plan, a super secret plan that's only been told to a few people. I don't think I'm even going to say it on air right now, but... If it goes well, the people will be warned of the checkpoint like two days in advance. And so remind me to bring that up next show. I will talk about well, whether, be or after, not be after, oh, whether or not it works. Yes, yeah. I'll and talk about the effectiveness. Warned two days ahead of time. Two days ahead of time. But they're already, they're already warned farther than that because we already know it's coming up. We, we know it's coming up, but getting the word out is pretty difficult. You know, I mean, you get 30 activists to show up and still people go through the checkpoint every now and then. Well, activists go through a checkpoint on purpose. Well, activists go through, sure. But you get those random people, too, who will go through who just aren't paying attention to the signs or, or they just hate activists. You know, there's those people who just get a job, I sir. I hate signs. Oh, no. Like, yeah, I have a job. Like, yeah. What's well, it's hard. It's happening. And, uh, Ooh, more about the checkpoint. <laughs> oh man let's see here so Ian was saying that uh, Keen already won I think the, the dance off or was it like something at Porkfest I don't even know what happened at Porkfest Wait, there was a karaoke at Porkfest before I don't know if they were like doing a karaoke well, Ian, was, the, was there or... a karaoke competition at Porkfest prior to because I'm not aware of that either yeah I wasn't even told about this and I'm a karaoke god from Manchester really? like <laughs> okay sure it's a rematch this is this is ancient history to us yeah you still have to understand we may have been here for multiple Shire years but we're still noobs compared to the OG uh, free staters yeah I mean last Porkfest was my first Porkfest and I was on drugs most of the time. <laughs> and not in perfectly honest, you're going to be on drugs most of the time in this pork. Yeah, that's true. Well, maybe less, maybe a little less. I don't <laughs> even know what that means for you. <laughs> less drugs. How do you gauge that? I don't... <laughs> Liberty on the Rocks. Wow, activists. him and JJ won for Keen singing Do What of Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. Oh, that's. That's haunting and beautiful. I would I would have loved to see that. Yeah, is there a video yeah, of that? Yeah, is there a video of that? I would love <laughs> to see that. <laughs> if you guys stay tuned, we have some clips of karaoke uh, from the other night that we're going to try to play on here for you guys. On the on the cam, of course. That's true. Karaoke videos do suck. Like <laughs> karaoke videos are pretty terrible. See, that's kind of why I don't want to do likes on a video as yeah. the judge. Well, that's how, why I want to have. How do we have an internet judge? You need it? to have impartial judges who are there at the events. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. So we got to invite like Mike Vine, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Sorens, um, the Koch brothers. I think they'd be great judges. Yeah. They, you know, they'd probably fund the event. Oh, we could get well. You could get uh, Vermin Supreme to judge. I I would love to have Vermin Supreme over to judge. I bet he would show up too. He would do it. He's my buddy. I'm sure he'd do it. We can say that uh, 
it's sponsored by the the president's the presidential campaign for Vermin Supreme. Sponsored by the future president of America, Vermin Supreme. <laughs> Vermin Supreme 2016.com. Oh, that reminds me. While we're on break here, the Rebel Love Show is brought to you by Rumpelman's, which is brought to you by Lauren Rumpler Productions. Do you think we could sell shirts at Porkfest that say, Who is Lauren Rumpler? Who is the artist formerly known as Old Girl? <laughs> sure. <coughs> <coughs> oh, we didn't even talk about uh we didn't even talk about it. Talk about what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> The cleanse. We <laughs> <laughs> forgot about it again. We forgot about it. You see, we're not gonna have this problem after we do it though. Or during, I should say. Yeah. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, during the break, we discovered that apparently there's already been some sort of Pork Fest karaoke competition between Match for Keen. And uh, Keen won, but uh, I would just call it a rematch because that's ancient history and I'm not an OG free stater. And I would just like to see this happen again. So, uh, sure, man. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're we're going to go into a uh, completely different subject here. With uh, we're both going actually the entire Rebel Love uh, pad <laughs> is uh, going to be going on uh, a uh, THC hiatus, a cleanse. Right um, now, I've I've actually read um, from a few different sources that if you stop smoking for about two weeks, um, you lose your marijuana tolerance and you don't have to smoke as much to get high. That's I'd love to do that because I smoke way too much nowadays. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. You okay? You smoke like a chimney. It's insane. <sighs> do it's, I really? Yeah, like I feel like I smoke. Anne a lot. does it more than I do. Oh, uh, she does. Yeah, and and definitely needs a cleanse too. Yeah, your rebel mistress. Yeah, we. Uh, I know we we we've gotten to the point where we smoke like the whole time. You guys are like the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Who are you? Who? <laughs> Just every word you say comes out in smoke. Yeah, we uh, yeah we need to take a chill on that. Uh, I'll be honest. It's uh, my I don't. At first, I used to think it was just really bad pot in regards to New Hampshire in general. Because back in the day, before I moved, it was great. I don't know, but I think it's just it's not so much that it's not bad. Well, it's probably a combination of the two. It's probably a combination of that of just like my tolerance is gone. Yeah, there's there's a big difference between the pot here and like the pot in California. Yeah, you know, granted, I was probably spoiled over there, but over there you is are. all. It's all medical grade stuff that you get on the street and, uh, you know, like two hits and you're just flying, you, you know. Yeah, that's how I remember pot. And yeah. I, then I moved here and I'm like, man, this is. Now there's like so many different. Now it's, it's better. I it's feel there's, better. there's different levels you can get, you know, hike high. You can get high and still like edit a Shire Dude episode. <laughs> yeah. That's probably better for you to edit like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get really high and then think of like really great ideas for like future episodes or even the stuff on here like that I want to talk about. Yeah. So uh anyways, uh Friday, the checkpoint. Now what's crazy is A there could be a uh I don't know if we want to name drop who it is, but we can name drop it, yeah. Sure. Freaking Morgan Morgan uh Spurlock. Spurlock. Yeah, it could be uh there with a, a documentary crew for some show. Or Mr. Super like Size Me yeah. is uh is gonna be in Manchester that night. And he's doing another event, another activist-run event, actually. And then I heard that he's going to hit the checkpoint afterwards. That's the word on the street. Yeah, word on the street, folks. And what's funny is, what's crazy is that there's another huge event happening, the uh, a art style uh, party that night, which is a regular thing. And they're still giving me enough people to go with that and do this DUI checkpoint. It's like, the, you know, there could be multiple large events going on at the same time. Yeah. And still... Both of those being successes. I would be shocked if we didn't get 30 people uh, maximum out of that checkpoint on Friday. 
Oh yeah, at least that. Yeah, if not more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's definitely going to be. Uh, I just hope it doesn't rain or get cold. That's my whole thing. Yeah, apparently activists are allergic to rain in New yeah. Hampshire. I didn't know this. Yeah, but well, here's the thing, though. Uh, <laughs> last year during checkpoint season, the co- see, cops hate rain too. Oh, that's true. And yeah. they will cancel a DUI checkpoint if it's raining. They don't want they don't want to stand out in that rain either. So they will actually they will just cancel and do it the next day. Yeah. So you want a solution to fair weather activists? Just get fair weather cops. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the the case here. Though so that wasn't the case during my ticket. That, that cop standing outside my window in that blizzard for 10 minutes. In the snow. In the snow. Uphill, both just ways. To, just to give me a ticket. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> you got to find the right uh, fair weather cop, I suppose. That's true. So uh, do you want to give us an update on uh, your, uh, speaking of tickets, your ticket trial? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I'm, uh, I don't know how much I've told on this show before, but I'll just go through it real quick. I got three parking tickets um, from the crazy Manchester winter parking ban bullshit. Um, you know, over the course of like a month, it was really bad. I was, you know, kind of negligent. I was having a really busy month. Anyway, I'm challenging all of those tickets, um, pleading no low. I've already had my pre-trial and I got the trial date, which is June 16th. Um, which, uh, hopefully it's live streamed. I didn't really plan to do any live streaming, but hopefully I can get someone to live stream it. I know Rob Matthias has already promised to film it, uh, for free keen. Yeah, but, uh, I am. I'm press, quote unquote. Yeah, he is, yeah. He is the media. And when I am the media. He's got a fancy like media pass and everything. We're all ready to go. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I've, I've pled no low and the, the entire goal of taking these tickets to trial isn't to beat them because I don't think I can. Um, but it's, it's just to not have to pay the city of Manchester. So they already have the money that's uh, been bonded so I can like schedule the trial. But I'm going to ask the judge to put that money towards a private charity Namely, uh, Shire Sharing. I'm going to try to donate to, Sh- to Shire Sharing instead of donating it to the, or it being taken from me and put to the city of Manchester. That's a noble thing to do. I feel like it's going to settle like my activist karma, you know, is figuring out the easiest way to convince a judge to let me fund this charity instead. I know well, Ian's done it multiple times. Ian Freeman's done it. What's your, uh, what's going to be your, um, your uh, strategy how are you gonna or do you want to release that? well shire sharing is a uh it's an official nonprofit, um and it's in the community and it benefits you know the surrounding community so i'd say uh you know if they say oh well you need to benefit the community around you because you've harmed them or whatever kind of bullshit they want to spin i want to say well this will directly benefit the community around me um, because it does it feeds you know needy uh families in manchester I'll give them the I'll give them the whole Shire sharing pitch. I'll I'll have Amanda Bolden herself type something up for me, <laughs> and I will read it in a court. state rep. Yeah, it would be coming from a state rep. Oh, that runs it. you know, it'd be amazing if she could show up for that too. If she could I show up for my would. trial, yeah, she'd be cool if she did. I would I would ask her very nicely, and I should I'd buy her Chipotle. Like <laughs> if she, <laughs> she shows up, Chipotle. Amanda Bolden, if you're if you show up to my trial, you got a Chipotle burrito right there. <laughs> I think I think that might work. That's that's the best uh, bribery of politicians I've ever heard. Chipotle, <laughs> <laughs> Chipotle burrito. <laughs> right, but it's all for yeah. a good cause. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we gotta feed uh, we gotta feed some hungry people in Manchester. It's a donation. Manchester. Yeah, it's a donation. It's a donation <laughs> for her work for Shire Share. New Hampshire state reps accept uh, Chipotle gift cards as for their uh, political campaign donations. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Dogecoin, but I mean, I'll definitely be there to uh, to record that because I was there the last one, which was there's our playlist on uh, same uh, YouTube channel. Go check that out. Uh, but uh, and then uh, what's also coming up? Uh, I actually probably have a. I'm going. I put my. Uh, I'm finding a ticket I got for an accident I was in, and uh, I filed to uh, fight it. I've yet to receive anything. What's back. the ticket for exactly? It's for following too close because honestly, I probably was, and I did. It was a rear end hit, but the cop wasn't there, and I am fighting it for the same reason because I just don't want to give them the money uh, for it. But uh, it's, it's kind of getting me scared a little bit because they have not sent a reply in the mail yet. So it's been like over three weeks, and I've yet to get a response. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you're gonna what you should do in that scenario. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, 
when I have time to go up to the like, if, if you station, wait too like, long, you're gonna end up with like a warrant or something. I know, I know. You know, that's not that's the last thing I want to happen to me. Yeah, so I definitely need to get myself in gear and figure that out. But hopefully, that's just coming in the mail. It's just behind. I don't know. Or the response was lost. The city of Manchester is like a really terrible girlfriend. If she doesn't hear from you after a while, she's gonna come. Get oh yeah, you. she'll hunt me down. She'll, she'll hunt yeah, you down. They will hunt. At gunpoint. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's because that is what uh, that's what the state does. They, right. uh, no, they would definitely do that. Um, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't even want to do court activism, but like I, I have to fight a ticket, man. You know, I, I I paid some earlier beforehand. Like I had a couple in the beginning of the uh, summer, and I just paid them off. You know, I could have fought them, and I'm like, it's not worth my time. But I feel like that's the least I can do is make them pay for like even the if you, of time and yeah, effort. Even if you personally don't accomplish anything in court, just gumming up the works, just having those cops show up and you know provide the evidence and whatnot. They're not out on the streets. Yeah, you know, um, if enough people do that, the the system wouldn't work. Yeah, even if it's for like you know just for twenty minutes. That's time that they're not out there stealing from somebody else. Right. For me, it's going to be two different parking enforcers are going to be, you know, in there. Yeah. Or I think they might be cops. I'm not sure exactly. I imagine they'd be cops, right? Because it was, there were, they're not, they're not meter tickets. They were winter band tickets. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It, it might be. Yeah. Anyway. It is, man. Um, but we'll be back. Uh, when we get back there, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, the show. You haven't heard this yet. I haven't heard our commercial yet, yeah. It's a good commercial. That's a great. That's a great commercial, man. I so I actually made that commercial, and uh, I still haven't. I hadn't heard it on on uh, LRN until just now. It's it's pretty. It sounds good. I think it came out okay. The next time, of course, I'd want to get all the recordings done in our studio, so they all yeah. sound uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Get some more endorsements. You know. We need to do that more with guests. Yeah. And they're in. Hey, anybody in the chat room, uh, what guests should we have coming up? We'll, we'll, we'll post this uh, as we're live as well. Yeah. But um, been thinking, we're coming up to episode 50 now. This is episode 48. So uh, episode been, 50, we should have some, you know. a year. We should have some pretty special stuff planned. I wish, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I forgot about the year anniversary of the show starting in the Shire. It just didn't yeah. even pass my mind. And yeah. I'm like... Wait, we passed a year of doing this show. <laughs> it's a little crazy in my mind to think about that sometimes. I really want to get a clip of the uh, the guy who says Rebel Love Show. I want to I want to get a clip of that guy to just throw into things. <laughs> who who is that guy, by the way? Yeah, I don't I, I don't know who he is. He sounds amazing, though. <laughs> Zeus. It's funny, because we're such LRN fanboys. 
we actually like as we're doing a show on LRN, we are in the chat room and we actively listen to the commercials. Yeah. Like <laughs> we came from LRN guys. Like this is this was like our window into the liberty movements. Yeah. In New Hampshire. Neither one of us would be here if it wasn't for LRN. Exactly. <laughs> we're we're one of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually used to pop into the chat room before before I was Shire Dude, and I wouldn't I say anything. Did. I would just pop in and just kind of see what people were talking about. I never got into the chat room until after I moved. I remember the newbie. I remember you being talked about on the Corey Moore show <laughs> before I moved in the chat. <laughs> vermin supreme yeah haven't we talked about that that i'm a um past version of vermin supreme from the future from the future <laughs> right <laughs> oh because vermin supreme is from the future himself you know it's so weird that i am now uh my future self is like hanging around the quill yeah it's really weird. Oh my gosh. If you saw the end of Shire Dude episode two, you saw Rob Mathias from the future. And the he the guy's been hanging around the quill lately, who uh play who is Rob Mathias from the future. <laughs> That's all I, can, I don't know. I'm thinking <laughs> his name. That's I all know I his, think of the best. I know his name, but I don't he's Rob Mathias from the future forever. Like he's never gonna be <laughs> That's what everyone calls him in like the Facebook groups and stuff. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he ran into me at work, which was crazy. Hmm? He ran into me at work. Really? Yeah. At my day job. It was... Uh, That's weird. I was helping someone. You didn't so. touch, did you? No, I have not touched him. Because that would have been I, a space-time paradox. It's bad enough we're even seeing each other at this point in time. Right. Like, I shouldn't even be seeing him. I mean, we're yeah. You've already seen each other. We've already gone. I've to, already done into the, a parallel the, the universe. The damage has already been done to the space time continuum. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't just ripped asunder already. Well, I'm just doing whatever I can to uh, um, save my future kids from being erased. I don't know from a, a picture. Talk, they're talking about Corey Moore in the chat. Oh, what, what are they saying about Corey Moore? <sighs> There's one thing that can be said about Corey, and that's he left us wanting more. Yeah. Yeah, for Corey Moore. Can we have a moment of silence for Corey Moore right now? Wait, wait. I got I got something better. I said poor in a four I'm gonna Vape salute. Vape salute to Corey Moore. I used to love them talking about vaping on the Corey Moore show. Yeah. I found it very entertaining. I wish there was a... There's, there's a big vaping community in the Liberty community. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's almost as hot as Bitcoin. You know, the vaping community in general is uh, like tenfold bigger than the Liberty <laughs> movement. Just like the like, poly community? They, yeah, it's just like the poly community. Like They got their own podcasts and YouTube channels and they got their own expos and, you know, like they have the whole, it's like a whole other scene. Just Who is to the Shire dude of the vaping community? Because I don't, I don't actually vape. I don't even own a vape pen. I don't know. A good uh, vape podcast, though, is Click Bang by uh, Russ Wishtart. He Click actually, Bang? Yeah, it's one I listen to. He actually, uh, Nikki Darling knows him. He re uh, I showed him around Manch uh, before you moved. Really? Yeah. That's cool. He was, oh, he was with his girlfriend at the time, which was Vape Girl on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Which was weird. I almost ran into her in California. Nikki Darling. 
No, Vape no. Girl. Oh, Vape Girl. That's right. That's right. You told me about this. We missed each other by a day. Apparently, her and Russ are no longer together. And he watches like the cop block stuff we do. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester. And I uh, kind of want to take this time to uh, talk about what we want to do with the show. Um, basically, we, we uh, have plans to upgrade it, for starters. So uh, one thing we'd love to do, we're going to get another PC in here, hopefully nicer cameras, and get a better video quality. Yeah, already I feel like we are, when we've said this before on the show, that we're like one of the most visually appealing shows in the Liberty Movement. Yeah, I mean, we're not a hangout show. We don't do that crap. We do in-person stuff when we have guests on the show. We don't, we never do Google Hangouts. We never do Skype. Uh, That's not something, we don't do guests on the show unless they're literally sitting across from us. And that's it. Right. That's the only time we ever do that. Yeah, if Barack Obama said he wanted to be on the show... I'd say no. If Jason Soren said he wanted to be the sh- on the show, but he could only do it from like his house, I'd say no. You know, I yes. The, yeah. There's from other people that say I'll I'll Skype in to your show when they live in New Hampshire. I'm like, no, it, you come here or it doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. You now, granted, that we you know, I, I was going to say we get invited on other shows to do uh, call-ins and hangouts. Yeah. But that's not true. You get invited to other shows to do call-ins and hangouts. Well. No, we were both on that one show, uh, Nick Bell show. Well, Eric Bell. Eric Bell. Yes, yes, oh yes. Oh my God, yeah, Eric Bell. My bad. Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you're right. I do, and you don't. Yeah. You so does it. Anne. <laughs> and Anne gets <laughs> Anne gets invited to go on the, shows. The rebel mistress. Well, she's gonna be. She's she's gonna be the next rising. Uh, she's yeah. She's gonna be big. She is, guys. The, if you don't, if you haven't already liked the rebel mistress on Facebook. Go give it a like because she's going to be the next she's big a thing rising star in the Liberty Movement. Yeah. She's going to be bigger than Josie she's Wales. She's Nicki Minaj of the Liberty Movement. She might even be bigger than Amanda Billy Rock at her peak. I don't you know. know. It's funny. She lives in a post Billy Rock world. She doesn't even know who she Billy even, Rock is. Yeah. That's like how crazy this thing is that she's been introduced to this in this community and is going forward and doing activism and whatnot and never even knew who Billy Rock was. That just right. blows my mind. Well, yeah, and she got introduced to like the hardcore stuff first. Yeah, and then so learning it backwards. You talk about Mises with her, and she she won't know who that is. Yeah, you know, uh, it's but, it's incredible. It's incredible that she's been able to come in this, you know, at this late in the stage, like this late in the game. Well, it's just it's just a different area in which she was introduced to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she was introduced at completely different. It's like uh, she dropped into the middle of the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like she was already dropped through, like. She bypassed, like, you know, we have both of us, you know, we have a 101, you know, like a, a college degree in, you know, liberty. Austrian like, economics. Uh, everyone, uh, yeah. You know, the whole Ron Paul thing. Like, How to cop block. You yeah. know, all the- <laughs> you know, who like all these different, um, you know, uh, legal theories. Yeah. History <laughs> and like everything that happens. Celebritarians. We know who those people are. Yeah. All these different uh, yeah. people that do uh, speeches and talks and. Or YouTube famous or something like that. Like we know everyone who, yeah. But FSP history, you know, yeah, all FSP history, yeah, like all that history. And she's just introduced, like, oh, I'm here now. Yeah, I'm, she, I'm in the Shire now. Yeah, it's it's awesome seeing that like introduction to Liberty because of the presence here. Yeah, you know, one, one of the first uh, celebritarians she was introduced to was Shire dude, and that's <laughs> a beautiful thing. <laughs> Though it was funny when she had that fangasm with Derek J. That was that was funny. <laughs> she had a uh, tell me about that. Oh my gosh, she's gonna hate me because I'm talking about this on here. Don't tell her, kids. Don't t- don't, <laughs> don't don't tell the rebel don't, mistress don't we tell talked her about. I'm talking about this on the show. She's in the other room. I don't know, tell she, her. Uh, hopefully, she's not listening. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so basically, when I was dating her, I showed her Derek J's victimless crime spree, um, and I waited. I waited like. Uh, two months before I actually introduced her to the community because I, I, I wanted to make sure if I did introduce her like because she'd always be around in case we broke up blah 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 but I kind of wanted to show her what I was about and uh, I showed her that like this is why I moved and she met him at the, the quill like in the beginning of October I think like late September 
and uh she had like this total fan guess of like it was so cute i wish i had it on camera to be perfectly honest i wish i captured it but she uh, she's like oh my god i love that documentary and you know she was like so super excited to meet him it was it was cute it was really <laughs> you know be someone who was introduced at such a early level and she still had that moment yeah i mean yeah. i can't say i was any different when i met derek J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so um anyways the show um definitely going to upgrade it uh multiple computers so that way our, our video quality going out because right now it's not that great with the green screen that's going to be fixed with a new computer uh and then on top of that uh we're going to get some better lighting. Oh, um, yeah, lightning. I mean, lighting. E eventually we're going to be moving, so we'll get to redesign the entire studio. Yes, that's, so. that, that's coming up too. So we're going to be moving at some point. But uh, better lighting, new cameras, new uh, computer equipment. It's going to level you, up the show. Now, I don't know if you want to talk about this on air, but you talked about how much money like you've sank into the show where we get almost no donations so far. It, it's, it's a lot. It's a, it's yeah. No, mind you, this equipment that's in the studio, we got dirt cheap. Yeah, like dirt cheap, but uh, at an intense discount. But at, at the same time, discount. it's you've still spent an extreme amount of yeah. you know. Granted, it's a hobby, sure, but yeah, it is a hobby. Yeah, uh, it's a hobby I put money into and time. Well, if you if you account the amount of hours I do each week, uh, based off say like a flat like fifteen hour rate, and then also count for like buying. Uh, the equipment in the studio, uh, this you know the server space for the podcast, all that, and the you know the laptop itself, the internet fees, like it, it kind of builds up tremendously yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, it's don't ever start if you're ever thinking about starting a podcast unless you have dedicated hours in your life every week to spend on it for forever, basically, um, don't do it. Don't don't start a podcast. It's uh it cost way too much money, and uh, you really have to have the life dedicated to do it. Luckily, I do. I don't know why, but I actually really love doing, it. and I love the life I live from doing it. Um, and I really much enjoy this show a lot. But uh, it it uh, it costs <laughs> it costs money, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't really realize that. You know, right. They think that. You know, and on top of don't ever start a podcast to make money too. That's just ridiculous. And granted, we're not Stefan Molyneux. You know, I'd love a two dollar donation, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to go buy a pint of I, beer. I had a I had a guy for my for my uh, troubles. Yeah, like I had a, I had a guy donate a Dogecoin the other day, and uh, I was very grateful. I was very grateful for my what, Dogecoin. A Dogecoin? No, <laughs> what is no. that like? What point zero cents? He donated zero in one. Dogecoin. Actually, it was a very generous donation. It was. Um, he donated about half a million Doge coins, <laughs> so it was. It was at two dollars? Extremely <laughs> generous. No, it was much more than that. Okay. Um, it was it's more than I should have gotten. I feel for the, but I I did a bang up a, a job on a video for him after that. So I that's like awesome. I, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, but yeah, this show accepts Bitcoin donations. No, yeah, yeah, uh, we definitely do. Uh, on top of that, um, oh, one thing I gotta get on is the bonus content. Uh, I gotta get that out. Um, I love having like another bonus content on the podcast feed, uh, at least uh, between every episode or at least once a month. And we have our episodes from Liberty Forum, which we haven't even released yet. And I'm a, I'm a Slacktivist, folks. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it, it it it's a lot to get out there. And yeah, having money to be able to take some time off of work to put more work into this show, you know, the more you donate, the better the show gets. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Uh, but I definitely plan to get that out. And then you're talking about uh, an after show for the show. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Now, if we, if we started getting some donations, of course, I'd be able to do it better. But um, I'd like to do like a little like kind of surrealist Shire dude after show to the Rebel Love show that uh, we could play. We could do uh, we could do it live right after the show. Yeah, it, um, it could so be you just on stay the tuned same in, uh, broadcast. The same YouTube broadcast, yeah. And we just have it tailed on the end of the Rebel Love show. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Do you think you can pull that off every week, though? Oh, yeah. I think I, I definitely think I could pull it off every week. I would love to have a user-submitted content show where I actually have, like, a base of people, like, submitting, like, you know, weird videos that they find. Or, you know, we could just have, like, a weird, weird, like, surrealist Shire Dude session right after the Rebel Love Show. I think that'd be a lot of fun. It would be fun. Right. Well, 
we'll get that done by the end of the month. If you got any more uh, suggestions for us, head us up, and uh, we'll be back after uh, this. Okay, there, but <coughs> <coughs> I'm trying to. Uh, when are we gonna enjoy get enjoy me for my cleanse? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. This is the last night I'm smoking. Did we even go into that really, or did we skip by that? You don't really remember. You, know, you, can, you never remember us talking about the THC I'm cleanse. Pretty stoned right now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it shows. <laughs> So am I. Um, but yeah, we're you know, um, oh my, the my. cleanse, man. I I, I feel like uh, feel like that'll be good for me, especially since I'm trying to finish the uh, Shire Dude episode. Yeah, yeah, man, be good for me too. Did you want to go into the Lizzie closely story after this? Oh my god, we haven't even talked. about I know that. we haven't touched it yet. I've been saving it. Because I noticed you kind of skipped by that. We didn't even that. talk about pick and choosing battles, too. We yeah. talked about that example. Which we can, we can talk about that if, after. Yeah, uh, yeah, after, but definitely. Or no, listen. actually, let's talk about that before. You sure? Yeah, because I feel like that'll lead into Lizzie Closely better. We can also talk about how, we, how I paid for my sexy haircut. <laughs> right, um, right. Because that, that's, that's fun. <laughs> I can go on a tirade about men and their girlfriends. <laughs> sure, man. Oh, asking what kind of content. We didn't talk about what, you know, other content they would like to see from us. Oh, newbie 66 is worried that I'm not listening to him. I'm, I'm laughing 66. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just Shire Shire Stone. Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I even had a Red Bull before the show because I knew I was going to get stoned. <laughs> just to keep up. And this is the I, Red Bull Love Show as well. So Yeah, I just had a whole great one coffee. <laughs> the ac- extra large. I'm sorry, a venti. No, it's an extra large. <laughs> What if it was in a different cup? Then it would be a Trenta because that's what extra large is when you're at oh. that other coffee shop. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> There's Zeus. That's the audio. That's Zeus. Zeus? Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, his name is Zeus? Yeah. Yeah, Ian was talking about him in the chat room. Oh. I pay very close attention to the chat room during the show. Apparently. Yeah. It's the most I read in a week. So start with this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. In Africa. <laughs> a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Yeah, man. You know, I think 66 asked about the pot laws in New Hampshire. They're not good. No. They can kidnap you for having too much pot on you. Yeah. The pot laws in Massachusetts are better. I'm pretty sure. Sunday 
a uh, fellow activist. I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, we went to a bar. And one thing in Manchester is they're cracking down on a bars not IDing people for drinks, even if you have a beard. Like, they ID everybody. Like, and that's because uh, apparently one of the managers of another bar uh, in Manch uh, got fined $10,000 for not carding. So they've been cracking down. And uh, so they're going to, they don't recognize the person, they're going to card them. And that's just a thing in general for bars. You go to a bar, you, expect, you bring an ID. And an activist, you know, true to the core, like I don't believe in, uh, you know, showing papers and whatnot uh, and doesn't carry an ID, uh, was asked to leave. Now, this particular activist does have a government-issued ID, I know for a fact, because okay. this activist drives. So yeah. they have to have, I mean, unless this living very dangerously, they have to have at least a driver's license. Now, now here's my thing. I 100% agree with him on it, but... Well, the moral aspect, The moral, the sure. idea of it. But I should pick and choose my battles, you know? I'm not going to, uh, you know, I get an ID to go drive my car. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, get, like, I get my car registered. I have plates on it. You know, I carry an ID on me. And uh, at the same time, for a bar, it's like, do I get drunk and sing karaoke and feel like a normal person? Or do I refuse to show my ID and leave the establishment? Well, I, I pick and choose my battles. Uh, and I, uh, you know, most people there did not do, uh, do what he did. And they uh, showed their IDs and we had an amazing time. Right. Yeah. I had to show my government paper. Sure. But that's all the state, you know, was involved with that evening. Like, yeah. I mean, I get the, the argument for it, but it's like, just not, just boycott that location. Not even show if that's how, how hardcore you feel you know uh i don't know i just find it fascinating that some people another take... interesting thing that was happening there that um was involved was the the vaping thing yeah Can we talk about that too yeah. i'm pissed off about that that's one thing i hated about that place. that was a private property issue the the people there had a sign up that said no vaping or e-cigarettes allowed yes and and I, I, I cooperated with that after I saw it. Yeah. Now, I actually posted something in the, uh, on, on Facebook about the no vaping thing. And I was like, hey, why don't we have like a vape-in? Like a vape-in to show, to protest their no vaping policy. And then someone was like, no, that's a terrible idea because you're dealing with the private property and not the state. Now, yeah. My rebuttal to that is they, they have uh, or had sit-ins during segregation. Right, and that was a private property issue. Right, they had sit-ins where black people would go and sit in and try to buy lunch. Well, those actually weren't. That was private property, mm, dude. For to my knowledge, those were because of laws that were in place forcing the businesses to do so. Mm -hmm. Those a lot of times those businesses weren't there uh, purposely segregated. Some of them were. Some of them were, yeah. But some of them were also being forced to by the state. But I see what you're saying, but in. I wouldn't be in favor of a sit-in I mean, for it's a, vaping. It's an extreme example, sure. It'd be extreme because I don't care but, about vaping. And, and but after 10, 20 people being kicked out in one night for vaping in the place, don't you think they would rethink their policy? Yes, that is true. If it was a one-time thing just to make them rethink because we love that place, we just yeah. want to vape there. I mean, granted, it's yeah. not like, it's not, you know, Rothbardian activism, sure, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. Yeah. I think we could change the business's policy. Granted, I think it's a better, it's probably a better strategy to actually approach the owner of the establishment first and to see if you can come to some sort of agreement. Probably. Right. And, um, you know, maybe show support online or something for, you know, pro vaping in this, this establishment and like have people sign a petition or something. Maybe start there. I just won't vape for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much work, man. That's way too much work. I just hate laws, man. I hear you. And rules in general. Yeah. So I'm just a contrarian. So, anyways, uh, kind of change the subject here. Our mess, our secret message that we got from so anonymous source by the name of uh, Lizzie Closely. That, that was uh, you get the joke, right? Listen closely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fake Facebook account called Lizzie Closely. Yeah. Uh, we both got a message from the source. Um, talking about our very own Liberty Phoenix. Yeah, that was uh, that's a little weird. 
It was really, really strange. Apparently trying to paint him off as like some gun ho conservative. He's on, yeah, uh, he's like Twitter. either like the Fed or like some like fake he's like a fake activist and he's like a secret conservative who's infiltrating our <laughs> our uh, free state project. Um someone's trying to destroy Phoenix's name. Uh I don't believe it for a second. It's it's no, I don't so it out either. there. He's he's a uh... Pierce to the form. He's hardcore. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, you know, he's awesome. You just one conversation with him, and you'll know he's not some crazy, you know, undercover guy who's trying to. That, that doesn't make any sense. And you know, we got this message. But why would he be late? But why would he be doing like two double lives? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't right. make any sense. Yeah, like, he's and he's constantly so, updating his Twitter account with yeah, conservative, crazy, anti-Muslim, uh, you know, pro hatred of everything and then point doing, of view, and then doing peaceful anarchist <laughs> posts on the next, and yeah. then how somehow that's neither one of his lives. It, it's, and it somehow he's sense. yeah, he's living without that cognitive dissonance to be able to keep up both of those lives. Yeah. Anyway, it's just this bogus thing. The entire the entire thing was based off of there's a Facebook account or no, not a Facebook. There's a Twitter account. Twitter account. There's a Twitter feed going out with this crazy conservative rant. It's in all caps. Like every post is in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> and there's these crazy like hateful pictures on there. And um, the, the account is called, I think it's F, -A -F or P. It's like H -X, Phoenix Ken or something. Phoenix like Ken. That. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what's really funny is the second that uh, Phoenix found out about this, he blasted it out on the, the Manchester uh, Facebook group called Cool Social. Yeah. He posted elsewhere too. Like he mm -hmm. posted everywhere showing. He, like, he did a reverse dry sand effect. Right. The Streisand effect yeah. is if you try to sweep it under the rug, it gets blows up. Well you have to be when when someone's doing something like that, if if he messaged us, you probably message a bunch of other people. So in that situation, like yeah, you should go public. Like this is what the messages that people are receiving, you know, this is not true, yeah. blah blah blah. Like, it, you know. The crazy thing is like, um, I was thinking like, well, maybe this is where Phoenix is from, like maybe this is his past that we're seeing, but no, this is like an account that's getting updated to the date. What drives someone to attack someone anonymously like that? Like, right. what, what would, what did, what did Lumber Phoenix do something that we can think of that like made this person like focus in on him? Create a fake Facebook account and message like his friends. Ex exactly. They who live through, in the Shire. Yeah. They go through that effort to friend people that he is friends with. Yeah. And to message them it's, from a secret account. This is on on par with like Ashley and Damon, right? Yeah, well, I, exactly. Those are two people that literally travel to the other side of the continent to troll people in real life. <laughs> that's, that's that's a little bit hardcore. Yeah. You know, like we moved uh, from the other side of the continent to make this a better world. And they moved to, uh, you know, troll people that are trying to do that, which I find uh, hysterical. But no, it's just kind of funny that, uh, that people get so worked up over another activist that, that go to those links how would you be creative instead right no Focus your energy elsewhere granted i would love that kind of publicity though to have a troll like that but uh yeah. <laughs> no troll shire you guys Oh, we didn't play any karaoke songs during the break. Hmm. Should I start with you or end with you? What are you talking about? The karaoke breaks, man. I completely forgot I had do these it. lights. Which one do you want to see do first? Do one of the weird ones. The weird ones? Yeah. Okay. This is. Uh, let's see if this audio right. works. Can you turn down Daryl at all? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have no idea if that went through or not. Yeah, I don't know if the YouTube listeners were able to hear that. <laughs> um, like it's super loud on our. It was super loud, dude. Yeah, so I have no idea why that's really loud. I can go to the next one if you want. Can, uh, Let's you, just play you. You should have probably edited the shots and turned down the volume on them before we went on. But that's you know, it's neither here nor there. Yeah, we can play me next. You want to do All it? All right, let's play you. It's 22 seconds, so it's the longer one. Might want to wait till the next break. Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> you got good at it. <laughs>
<laughs> but Bruno, look at Bruno. He's he's a rock star. He he has like a he 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 sings like he's like a, what's his name from uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and that's all that's all online, right? That's all at uh, Voluntary Rebel YouTube. It's uh, V Rebel Raw. Oh, V Rebel Raw. Okay. Yeah, I, the other one that I just use that as my raw challenge. Just I don't unedited videos. Just go up on that. You know, I created that raw channel out of uh, getting upset at local activists. You included, by the way. Was that? No, because I wanted to, like just to support like a group raw channel, and I was the only one posting to it. Yes. So I just gave up on that channel. I was like, "Why? Well, if I want to be the only one doing it, I want to have it under my like, you know." You could have had the community one going still. <clears throat> I've thought about restarting another one up and give it access to anyone to post. Yeah, I think I think people would submit to a community raw channel, give them, give them more people access though, not just a few people. That's Before true. it was just a few of us, right? Yeah, I can give it to more people. Yeah, I mean, I think more people in Manchester, you know, they they have footage, they just don't put it up or or don't have a home for it, you know? Yeah. Technically, I still have access to the... Uh, the old one? The old one. Yeah. Keenvention. I loved Keenvention, man. Keenvention was fun. Hmm. I can't wait till next convention. Was um, lost? It was funner than uh, Liberty Forum. I, I I've been informed that I'm already uh, I'm already a panelist for a convention. Oh, what panel? Upcoming. Um. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't want to give it all away right now. It's oh. not announced yet. Okay. <laughs> all right. It's news to me. I told you this already. I don't remember. Yeah. How? If you can't remember the last segment, how do you expect me to remember what you told me like months <laughs> <Yeah>. ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh man so what are we coming back with this yep <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and uh, here in in the Shire, it is uh, New Hampshire is the first in the Union uh, presidential primary state, so uh, it gets crazy around here with presidential candidates and you know the who's who in the, of the politicos, you know, eating at uh, you know Red Arrow or something like that. Right. You know? Yeah. Rand Paul was at Murphy's the other night. Yeah. So a lot of. Uh, ambush opportunities exist because it's a small population you can get up close and personal relatively quickly um and we've been toying with the idea of uh doing content like that like doing ambush videos of some sort or another it's the season for it yeah i don't know i don't know if our listeners listeners would really be interested in uh you know ambush interviews of uh random po politicians M i myself really don't care about politicians Neither but i would love I. I would love to troll them yeah that's the thing and this is like kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity because you know maybe well once every four years no 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 supposedly they want to uh a lot of people think new hampshire won't be the first in the state anymore the other states will bump it up i've heard that too i don't think that's true it could happen i don't think that's gonna happen i think new hampshire is gonna be the first in the state until the United States crumbles, you know, All the right. government is no more. Okay, every four years. But who, who knows what my life would be like in four years. So I'm still going <laughs> to live there once in a lifetime. Right, we could already be in a FEMA camp in four years. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like we just laugh that off, like, you know, like on The View or something. Um, but uh, yeah, should, should we do something like that? I would do it just for the fun of it. Just to do it. Because it would be fun to yeah. like, go up to a... like. Well, Vermin Supreme does it, you know, and yeah. uh, he's a big inspiration to me. And I'd love to go out and do, you know, right alongside him or, you know, get all the candidates he's missing, that kind of thing. Yeah, it could be fun. Uh, we'd have to think, I, I would also love to see some street theater. 
in regards to like uh, yes. ambushes. It doesn't have to be an interview, but like some sort of uh, you know acting out street theater of some kind or another uh, as like a protest or something like that to ambush where politicians are going to be at. Yeah, I mean, even uh, politicians or no politicians, more street theater in Manchester just in general is good. Yes, but I'm not. I'm not the the creative genius that uh, comes up with all the great ideas here. You need to come up with some straight, great street theater. You're overdue. There's Well, there's already a guy talking about doing some street theater. It doesn't have anything to do with activism, though. It's just like surrealism for the sake of itself. It's a very yeah. strange approach. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, so I don't want to give away all the, all the information, but it'll happen here in Manchester um, pretty soon, and I'm going to be filming it. So if you stay tuned to the Shire Dude YouTube uh, channel, you should be able to see that. That's going to be out. interesting to watch. Yeah, because um, um, we're going to set up some like cameras and stuff. and It's kind of like a flash mob, but more surreal than a flash hey, mob. They're not going to just be dancing. What's going Cyrus. on with, uh, with the, the Free State Show? or, or what, Oh, the Free or, Show Project? Free Show Project. We talked about that before on, on the show. Yeah, right? I know. I want like an update. Way back in the day. So the Free Show Project, uh, for people who don't know, or it was kind of an idea. It was from Rich Paul. It was totally uh, Rich Paul started this idea. And it's to have like um, skits, like a short kind of almost like an SNL style show, but from activists in the Shire specifically. And, uh, you know, people just submit little video clips and we throw them in as like skits. Like it could be sketch comedy. It could be serious. It could be activist clips, you know, but uh, just something fun and entertaining. That's like a 15 minute format. I don't know, twice a month. Nothing huge. Um, Of course, you know, I guess that that is pretty huge when you consider the shows coming out of the Shire. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. One thing I think could be done is, uh, you know, more and more uh, content that I would love to see is somewhat fiction, you know, fiction, like skets, ske- uh, you know, uh, yeah, sketches, sketches yeah. uh, and I think whatnot. That's part of the big appeal behind Shire Dude so far is that I'm actually producing fiction. Yeah. Um, in a large part, a lot of it is a lot of it is nonfiction that's been filmed and then turned into fiction. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'd love to see more of that and I'd love to collaborate more with people. Um, but you know, it's tough. It's really tough finding people who want to collaborate on on, uh, on projects like that. Uh, a lot of people want to do more serious stuff out here. Well, that's not, there's nothing wrong with doing serious stuff. Yeah, you know? I would just like more creative types to move out here you know, with me and uh, I think that'd be really fun. I would love to see a thriving Liberty art scene. Like, you know, just... Uh, go crazy here in Manchester. I would love to see something like that. Uh, I don't think there's enough. Right. There's not enough Liberty art just in general. <laughs> yeah. like the, the culture, like this is a culture, uh, you know, and I just like any culture needs an identity and needs more art to uh, signify like what, what we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds weird to say, but like every scene has like, I, you know, cultural figures in regards to like art that is done that identifies like, you know, what that scene is like, you know, what the, uh, you know, characteristics of it. And I don't want just yeah. the characteristics of us to be, you know, 30 year olds that uh, are really love Bitcoin and either have huge beards. Wait, yeah. Do. When you think about the Egyptians, what do you think? Like you think of like the hieroglyphics, man, on the walls. Like when you think about like the Greeks, you think of Greek art. You don't think of, you know, like what they like to spend. <laughs> right. Yeah, we need, we need more artists in the Liberty community. Uh, you know, coming together and, and making really cool shit, especially here in the Shire. The Shire's ripe for it. I mean, there's so just living in the community, you, you uh, get in, uh, introduced to so many interesting people, and uh, the only problem I ever see sometimes is the people that are camera shy. That's something. That's some things uh, I've noticed with uh, many libertarians and anarchists and whatnot. You know, they're off the grid. They don't, yeah. they don't want Big Brother to see that there's a photo of them at some event of some sort or another. Oh, yeah. I've had people hide from my camera before. <coughs> Although I've, I've been uh, in the act of some highly illegal uh, agorism, and uh, I've had cameras pushed into my face. So I've been on the other end of that where I'm like, nope, you can't, you can't take a picture of me right now. I'm doing highly illegal stuff. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, but that's you protecting yourself from... Yeah, mitigating damage at that point, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, if you're just, you know, hanging out, yeah, you know, that to me it's like, well, 
It it depends. It depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're doing for and sure. Everyone's Absolutely. got a line, really. Like I don't mind, you know. Shit, I'll smoke pot on the show right now, and we're live streaming to the internet, and you know, I mean, you don't really know where we are because we're on a green screen. Yeah, but uh, we could be, we're uh, we're somewhere <laughs> on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm okay with that. Like that's fine, you know. Um, but yeah, there there are the levels of, of where I won't I won't be photographed. Like, I understand that. Well, I mean, if you're doing something illegal, then yeah, I understand that. Absolutely. You know, you're protecting yourself from that. Uh, but I don't know. Sometimes, like, I'm hanging out with a friend. Like, you know, hey, let's, you know, there's a cool picture. Let's take a picture, you know? And, like, normal people, normal people take pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> normal, people, normal people take pictures. Normal people, have you Snapchat. know, have Snapchat. All right. <laughs> normal people do stuff like that. Normal people, you know, share them, share like a quick little video of them doing something and throw it on Facebook. Like normal people. Yeah. <laughs> normal people do that <laughs> stuff. Like that's not. We're, I, we're so normal, Rob. <laughs> you know, that, I think that's why we're the crazy ones here. Whoa. That we're the normal. We're, we're, <laughs> we're so um, uh, daywalker. We're so daywalker. That we're almost normal, just well, almost. Yeah, but we're still crazy enough to be here, <laughs> walking a fine line between uh, between full keen and full normal. Where does full manch lie on that line, anyways? I, I, like, I feel like we're setting that line, man. I feel like we're setting it. I think we are kind of identifying the uh, manch culture a little bit because we're the only ones that actually put stuff out here in Manchester. You know, right? Yeah, unless it's a Bitcoin show. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're the you know we're the top live show in Manchester. That's there's no doubt about that, right? Well, uh, I guess Flaming Freedom comes out of Manchester so, somewhat. Yeah, it's, day, it's day, uh, partially. Are they doing it all at Dale's now? I don't know. I yeah, don't, I haven't watched the show in a while. I haven't either. We probably should. I love watching Flaming Freedom. By the way, uh, you guys in the chat room, I love watching Flaming Freedom on Thursdays at ten. Yes, it's a great show. Yeah, I'd love to be on there too. If we could work that out. You guys, Dale, Derek, <laughs> Mr. Shire, dude, during the break. <laughs> Local mentally unstable man. Uh, oh, so hey. we definitely got to watch the YouTube feed after this and see how the, uh, <laughs> the karaoke the did. Karaoke did? Yeah. yeah. If that if that worked out and the audio was uh, anywhere near good, then uh, we'll have more fun stuff to play during the breaks in the future. I'd love to design. I don't know, just random, random stuff to put on for you guys. Because sometimes our breaks are, you know, entertaining and insightful, and sometimes we're just kind of oh, sitting here on Sometimes I wouldn't phones. mind putting a, uh, yeah, right. Put look and ads in between. for other podcasts. I would love to make video ads for other podcasts that we could air. I, oh yeah, yeah. I might, you know, if I really like your podcast, I might do one for free. But you know, see, I need to start listening to new podcasts. There has to be new stuff out there I've never even heard of. Hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you're in the chat room right now, what? What's what podcasts are hot right now? Yeah, like, what's, the, what's the new shit? What's the, not, not just the Liberty Movement either. Like, I would like to listen to some other stuff too. I can tell you what I'm listening to right now. Huh? My podcast I'm listening to. What? <laughs> um, lately, I've been listening to uh, um, Polyamory Weekly. Really? Uh, yeah, I've been listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk. Um, that guy's a status though. A vape podcast, which I forget the name of, and uh, I went back to listening to Android Central. Yeah, because I used to listen to tech podcasts back in the day, and I've been listening to that again. Hmm. <laughs> That's my podcast list. Yeah, like, I get like a, I get out my podcast list. It's hard listening to other Liberty podcasts. Hmm. It's hard. Well, I mean. Especially, you know, I don't know. I live and breathe this life. Yeah. I live and breathe this life, and it's hard to listen to someone else tell me why I should believe this. Especially like, since, I get it. 
the majority of the really good Liberty podcasts, they're talking about what ha- what's happening in the Shire. And we're, li- we're in the Shire. Yeah. We already know. Yeah. <laughs> I used to listen to Free Talk Live to, and other other run shows, like know what's going on here. Right. It's like, I don't need to listen to you guys now. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Dave Foreign's nonpartisan, nonpartisan Liberty for All. I, I've listened to part of his show when my Rebel Mistress was on. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. I didn't end up listening, but I, I'll, I'll probably tune in for some some of it. I just hate the name. It's such a horrible name for a yeah. show. Nonpartisan <laughs> Liberty for All. It's a mouthful. It's, just, it's too much. Yeah. Love the guy, though. It was actually a good show. No, ShireDude.com. See, that's, that's a nice, concise name. ShireDude. It's great. You know, I introduce myself to people as Shire now. He really does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> I have a picture of, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about that coming up because that's fascinating. Hey, thanks, 66, for recommending some stuff. Hmm. Would you move there? Norman Craig's podcast. Freedom Zealot and Pro Liberate. I'll have to check that out. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what? Which one I love listening to? I got off of Free Talk Live in the ads. Uh-huh. It was verbal surgery. I never listened to it. I use that all the time. And um, I'm probably hypnotized to say this, but it's fantastic content. <laughs> it's Each episode is a hypnosis session. My, my favorite podcast is... Uh... <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. Uh, while the studio is still standing, <laughs> the show is crumbling beneath <laughs> us. Are you dropping things left and right, things are breaking. Like, what are you doing? Today? So, speaking of the dude, yeah. One thing I want to let uh, all the listeners at home know about when we're talking about this during the break a little bit. Like Shire Dude really does go by Shire Dude. Yeah. He goes by that out in the real world and introduces himself as such. Now I've gotten to the point where I can do it um and not get people to say what? Like sometimes I introduce myself as dude and sometimes I sometimes I introduce myself as Shire. Um, but I tend not to say the full name anymore because that makes people really confused. Yeah, if you just say Shire, that makes Yeah. Actually, um I started I started using Shire when I went to my first munch. <laughs> um, which if you don't know what a munch is it's uh it's an event where uh <laughs> kingsters go and i went to my first munch not that long ago i didn't talk about this on the show yet so i wanted to mention it oh i yeah i have a i have a munch story i wanted to munch it. i have a munch story right after that okay yeah and it was in nashua and there's a lot of old people but they're really cool and kingsters man i'm just kind of like hey, i'm just peeking into that scene i'm not i, really... I, I peeked my head back in there um <laughs> When uh, my other partner, uh, anyways, uh, went to a munch in uh, Manch, which happened to be at Strange Brew, which happened to be in the same back room that the Bitcoin meetups at, where there's the same like waiter who recognized me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and they had like 40 people in there. Yeah. All right. Again, older crowd mostly. Crazy thing is, I leave, I get recognized by another porcupine who I had never even met, but recognized me from Facebook. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like I couldn't even go to a bunch without like someone knowing from yeah. like, like in Manchester recognizing me. Well, it's interesting uh, the different community between Kingsters and uh, there's a free huge staters overlay. Is free staters are all taking pictures of themselves at at uh, not munches at uh, Bitcoin <laughs> meetups and such, but uh, munches you're not allowed to take pictures without telling someone and like you know. Well, like, yeah, they don't want to be outed. Yeah, they're they're really really they're careful. hardcore about that. Yeah. Well. That, I, under, I understand it. I mean, a lot of people are kind of secret about what happens in the bedroom, you know, Yeah. And uh, versus activists who want everyone well, to know I, everything. I can relate to that because it's, you know, I, uh, I don't go that crazy, but I do come out as poly at work. Like, yeah. I talk about like my relationships and stuff like that. Like people ask like, you know, hey, do you have a girlfriend? I'm like, yeah. And yeah, you know, like I'll, I'll talk about what's going on. As yeah. If it's my normal life, which is normal life for me. But at the same time, I'm a little cautious to talk to about certain people because I know they're more conservative than others. I don't want them to like 
judge me, you know, and I haven't even come on the whole Liberty side of thing. Yet. I'm just trying to warm, warm them up to most of the people there, you know, um, but I can relate to why people at munches don't want to be outed on the internet. That makes perfect sense because they might be working in a conservative area of their job. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, funny story, man. I don't know. I got recognized at a munch, <laughs> which is my only one because of the, uh, um, because of the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was my last one. But uh, anyways, uh, we're what we're gonna end with here, Shire dude. We got we got a few topics left, right? Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. All right. So. Yeah, the uh, street theater thing. I think we should uh, have something planned. We need something great to come up with. I, that. I would love some suggestions. If you want to comment on this and uh, suggest what uh, what kind of um, street theater. You know, I guess you really got to start with a message, right? Whatever message you want to get across. I, think, and I, would, I would like to do something even that's not really activism. Just, you know, more of a general message perhaps. Yeah. 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 I would definitely love to see something like that. I want to see something that's never really been done before either. Something unique. Right. You know, something that's be very unique uh, to Manchester. Um, yeah. Manchester is largely stuck in like the 80s and 90s. So I feel like a lot of what we can do would really surprise them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, anyways, one thing I do want to touch upon. Uh, so earlier today, we uh, went down to a barber shop here in, in uh, the Shire. You can go to a barber shop that not only uh, um, is like liberty friendly, but like takes Bitcoin, so you can pay for your haircut and tip in Bitcoin, and they have free beer. Like, what's not to love? All right. However, one thing for Bitcoin uh, people, places that take Bitcoin, you have to have like a a copy of your QR code ready to go, especially like in case like you don't have an internet connection. So the other person can, can still pay for that. Cause that was, that's an issue that arose. Yeah. That was a flaw. The guy had a Coinbase account, which I imagine they're, they're liquidating all their Bitcoins immediately. Yeah. But, uh, ah, you know, it's still want to support a place that accepts Bitcoin. Um, and the Coinbase thing wouldn't load. And he checked to see if it was Wi-Fi. He switched to data and Coinbase still wouldn't load. And it's a so, Coinbase issue, but like, he should still have another QR yeah. his, his main wallet. You could just take a screenshot of your Coinbase wallet and, uh, you know, you you could do that offline. You don't even need yeah. to print it out. Just a screenshot on your phone. I mean, you're trusting that the, the confirmations went through because you don't have that access. Right, yeah. But the, the person doing the transaction could just turn the phone over and show you. And show you that it's like, confirmed. Hey, it's confirmed. It went through on this wallet. Right. You know? And unless there's some kind of tech guru and they figured out how to fake a Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. I mean, that's so niche. I don't think anyone's running around doing that yet. <laughs> and on a side note, one thing that pissed me off today at, at this barbershop, I went on rant about it on Facebook. Men never, and I mean ever, don't you ever take your girlfriend to a barber shop. It's like a holy territory. You never bring your girl into a barber shop. <laughs> All right, this woman, this woman, she was in there uh, drinking the free beer. All right, and telling the barber how she wanted the guy's haircut. The guy's haircut, <laughs> and then the guy. You know, maybe maybe they're kinksters because he was like a total sub. Oh, all right. And he's like, she's the boss. He said that. Yes. Well, he yeah, that's, that. that's apparent. He didn't have to, but yeah. Yeah, and it was it was embarrassing to watch. Like that that doesn't take place in a barber shop, and I never thought I'd imagine to see that. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'm uh maybe it's the the freedom thing in me. I can't uh yeah I can't imagine a partner of mine like literally following me to every little tiny situation because Anne, Anne wanted to do that. She wanted to go with, uh, to, to the barbershop. barbershop. And I, I laid that yeah. law down. <laughs> I'm like, <"No>, look, yeah, <laughs> you are not going to the barbershop with me. That is like, that's no, but oh, you'll never come with me. So overall, uh, besides the, the Coinbase experience, you'd say you'd go back. Oh, the, absolutely. The, that place was fantastic. The Barber's man. Tool Shed, if you the want to Barber's check it out. Barber's Tool Shed in Merrimack. Oh. That place was fantastic. It's already listed on uh, CoinMap, and I think, I'm pretty sure it's already listed on Liberty.menu. I don't know if you've been there yet, listeners, but... Uh, Liberty.menu. That's an amazing site. Uh, 
it needs more content to be submitted by people. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Yelp of the Liberty Movement plus more. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful idea, beautiful experience. Uh, I would love to see that site flourish with a lot more Liberty content. Um, I'll, I'll say I need to I need to post some events on there. Yeah, I got to post on there too. I know I'm telling people too, and I haven't really posted on yeah. it much, but yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, in all honesty, that that's a really great place for the Shire because like is. they so concentrated with Liberty events going on here. Like I would love to just see people post there because most people post about stuff going on here. And just, it's, it'd be a great way to showcase uh, where the Liberty activists are in the country. Yeah, and they're they're all here. They're all here in the Shire. Yeah, and uh, if they're not here, they're, they're, as the prophecies say, there's thousands coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines oh, please, from any freaking footage. Tell me this going to be the Shire Dude season finale. The uh, I'm definitely going to throw it into the Shire Dude season finale. Uh, Ian Freeman, when when one of the locals in Keene is telling one of their activists, why don't you just go home? Why do you have to be here? Uh, <laughs> Ian says, we are home, lady, and there's thousands more coming. Thousands. <laughs> and it's the best line. It's, uh, oh, man. Yeah. That, I got I got the chills watching no, that. No, so man. did I. So did I. It was, it was uh, you know, sometimes I watch videos and see content. I see it in like a Shire dude like lens. All right. <laughs> and when I see something like that, I'm like, that is Shire dude gold. When I see it, like I now like I'm looking for content. Yeah, you this, whip out the camera when you see something Shire dude happening. I do. And I, I, I'll be honest, I think I take a pretty good job of finding you know, a yeah. decent amount of content for you. Because if I see something interesting, I'm like, that is something that would be perfect for Shire too. <laughs> Definitely. I want, and too many people don't record, man. That's the problem. I know. I, know? I do. I do though. I, I've gotten enough really incredibly embarrassing footage for uh, I think the finale. I think it's going to be something really special. Oh, can you hint at the the embarrassing footage? Oh man, there's going to be a lot of Carlos Morales, Ash the Studio Cat, and a bit of Daniel Cuevas. Oh. And I think this. Oh. You're going to love it. You got me wanting for more. Uh, where can everyone find this future content? It's all going to be at ShireDude.com. All right. You can find uh, the show at Facebook.com slash Rebels Love Show. Yeah.